Welcome to Fortinet Security Fabric, a smart security solution. The Security Fabric is an integrated framework that connects and protects your entire network. It is a comprehensive cybersecurity designed to provide seamless protection across your entire digital infrastructure. If we can describe it in simplistic way, we can say that Security Fabric is here to provide adaptability, automation and response. And it can be assembled from multiple components. Now, let's take a look on Security Fabric highlights. Protocol used in Security Fabric is called FortiTelemetry and it is using TCP port 8013. Object synchronization. When the Security Fabric is enabled, various objects such as addresses, services and schedules are synchronized from upstream FortiGate to our downstream devices. Topology views. Physical and logical topology can be viewed on root FortiGate and this is very helpful for the network management. SSO, single sign-on, leverages SAML security assertion markup language. In simplistic explanation, it enables you to access multiple web applications using one set of login credentials. Security rating, it analyzes your deployment, identifies vulnerabilities, highlights best practices and provides tips to improve your security. In this video, I am going to show you how to configure security fabric in lab which we are building. Important thing to mention is that core of the security fabric consists of at least two FortiGates, from which one will be root and one will be downstream. Third component would be Forti Analyzer, which we have deployed in previous video. I will attach a link in the description. I would recommend to start with the hitting snapshot button, so you can revert back if needed. As usual, configuration of HA cluster is executed on this VM, so let's go there. I will use long time pre-configured bookmark and login. If this looks somehow confusing, I would encourage you to start with the part 1 of my lab series. First step in security fabric configuration would be to check interfaces. Double click on interface and under administrative access make sure security fabric is checked out. Then scroll down and enable device detection, which will allow FortiGate passive scanning on port and gathering information about devices operating on network. This includes details such as MAC address, IP address, operating system, hostname, username and when device was detected on which port. Repeat this step on all interfaces where you would expect security fabric connection. In my case, I am going to enable it on Tunnel interface just to demonstrate feature capabilities. On this interface, device detection option will not be available. After administrative access is enabled on interfaces, head up to security fabric and open fabric connectors. As a second step, we are going to configure for the analyzer logging. Your connection status should initially appear as unauthorized. For now, click OK, I am going to authorize devices all at once later. In next step, click on the security fabric setup, fabric role will be served as fabric root, interfaces are already predefined based on our administrative access, so pick the name of the fabric and that should be all. As previously mentioned, object synchronization will take a place upon security fabric activation. You might not want to disable this feature, but if you want to keep objects to stay local, here is how. Command will be set fabric object unification local. Save it end and we are ready for the next step. We are going to jump to Cisco switch and enable link layer discovery protocol there, which is a protocol that allows devices to advertise device information to their directly connected peers. Very similar to CDP, but CDP is proprietary, therefore we are going to disable it. 
And just like that, Forticade will be able to pick up a lot of information from the switch. Important security note here is that you might not want to send same info to the end devices, so I'm going to show you how to disable it. Although you don't need to do that, as we will have more fun with the port security later. That's it on the switch, just save the config and we are done here. Our next step will be on Remote FortiGate, which is deployed as virtual machine and it is going to be available straight directly via browser of the physical machine. For better understanding, check the deployment video, I will attach link in the description. It is available on IP address 192.168.199. We will start with allowing security fabric on administrative access on interfaces where fabric connections are expected, of course including device detection. After that, similar as before, head up to fabric connectors, but this time we will configure fabric setup first, and Fortinalizer settings will be replicated automatically. Click on join existing fabric and specify root FortiGate IP address, which in our lab is 10.100.10.3. In default admin profile, I am going to select super admin. And as management IP, I am going to type down IP which is on interface facing the root connection. 10.100.11.3. That's it, click OK. And you will get a warning that device automation configuration will be discarded. Which means that automation stitches will be now available only on root FortiGate. Now let's go authorize new member of the security fabric to the root. You can do so via system notification or clicking on system then fabric management. To confirm authorization simply click on refresh button. And I'm going to do the same on remote FortiGate just to see if everything is ok. Now we are going to establish connection to Forti Analyzer and you will see shortly it is not able to connect. This is because we have set up fabric connection via VPN tunnel and there is no policy which would allow traffic source from egress interface of this FortiGate. However, there is better way than configuring bidirectional policies on both sides of the tunnel, so let me show you how. We are going to enter a security fabric configuration mode with the command config system CFS and set configuration synchronization to local. Without this command, you will not be able to modify Forti Analyzer configuration, which we'll do in the next step. Save with the end, then type in config log Forti Analyzer settings, and we are going to simply set source IP address of the local network, which is already allowed in our VPN tunnel. I have added one more command which is recommended, upload option, real time, then again save with the end. Next you should be able to see information about 40 analyzer serial number, just confirm with the Y. Now I'm going to refresh and check connection status on 40 analyzer again. Like you see, connection status is now changed, which leads to our next step, authorized devices on Forti Analyzer. It is possible to do it from here, but I want to show you directly on Forti Analyzer, which is reachable from Kali Linux VM. Here 
Here we can simply open new tab and type in IP address 172.16.10.99. Authorization is going to happen in Device Manager and it is going to be as simple as marking all devices, waiting for authorization and clicking on Authorize. With that core configuration of Security Fabric is finished, give it some time and status of authorized devices should appear as up. Alright, here is the summary of the features you have gained access to. I encourage you to go through them, explore topology views, security rating as well as play with the automation. One last thing I wanted to show you before we wrap this up and that would be overview how much information is FortiGate able to pick from switch after we enabled LLDP there. On FortiGate LLDP is running by default, however let me show you command which enables it globally. Right after that, with command diagnose LLD per X neighbor detail, we will get information about directly connected neighbors which have LLDP enabled. Just look at the amount of the details you can get. With that, I'm going to say goodbye and see you in next video.